Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at how easy it can be to graph rational functions and understand why they look the way they do, and we'll be able to figure out all the basic characteristics, for example, any asymptotes, x and y intercepts, and so forth, and then easily sketch the graph, even without a calculator. Now, remember that rational functions is just a function where the numerator and denominator are made up of polynomials. And because a polynomial, a single polynomial, exists everywhere, in other words, the domain of a polynomial is always all real numbers, rational functions have a domain of all real numbers except the values that allow the denominator to be zero. So let's start out with a very simple one here. 3x plus 4 over x minus 2. Now, the first thing we want to notice here is that the degree of the polynomial in the numerator and the degree in the denominator are the same. They're both a first degree polynomial. And therefore, if the degrees are the same, you will always have what we call a horizontal asymptote. And all you need to do is consider the leading term divided by the leading term. Remember that the leading term isn't necessarily the term that comes first, it's the term that has the highest degree. So here, the leading term divided by the leading term just reduces to 3. So in other words, that's our horizontal asymptote. Now, the meaning of a horizontal asymptote is really the end behavior of the graph. That's what the graph will approach out at the ends. In fact, we could write that as, for example, x approaches infinity. As x approaches infinity, so that's basically describing the right part of the graph, my function, in this case, then, will be approaching this line, or the value where y, the function value, equals 3. And likewise, as x approaches a negative infinity, so then now I'd be calling or talking about the left part of the graph, my function value is approaching 3, because they're both just approaching that horizontal line. So this is one way we could write the end behavior. We could also just write it like this, our horizontal asymptote. Or we could also, those of you that maybe have had limits, we could say as x approaches infinity, the limit of the function as x approaches infinity equals 3. Okay, in other words, that's what the function is approaching, okay, the limit as x is approaching infinity. So there's different ways to write the end behavior, but that's really all we're referring to is the end behavior of the graph. Now, the vertical asymptotes are very easy to find because those are just the values that allow the denominator to be zero. So in this case, my vertical asymptote would be two. Two is not in our domain. And therefore, we get a vertical asymptote there. So every time, every value that allows the denominator to be zero gives us a vertical asymptote with one exception, which we'll look at here in just a moment. Now, the y-intercepts are very easy to find. All you have to do is put zero in for x. Because if x is zero, you're on the y-axis. Okay, notice this point right here. This point here has the coordinates zero, three. It's on the y-axis, so therefore x is zero. Now, if I put zero in for x, I just have 4 left in the numerator and a negative 2 left in the denominator, or a negative 2. So I know it's crossing the y-axis at a negative 2. The x-intercept happens when y is 0. Now, this is y, your function value. So the only way a fraction can equal 0 is if the numerator is 0. If you need to, you could just set the numerator equal to zero and solve. And in this case, the numerator, if we solve that, uh, when it's set equal to zero, we get a negative four-thirds. So that's my x-intercept. So in other words, basically a negative one and a third, so about right here. Now, once we know all this information, which we, which we knew just by looking at the function, we really have no choice how we graph this, because I have to approach those asymptotes, and I have to cross here and here. So over here, the graph looks like this. And over here, notice I couldn't 
graph it here because that would force me to cross the x-axis here and I know there's no x-intercept there. So in other words, it's up here. And that's why the graph looks the way it does on your calculator. Okay, so notice we knew all this information really just by looking at this function. Now, <clears throat> let's go ahead and try another one. A little bit different type. We're gonna look at four different types today and then after these four, I think you'll find it very easy to graph most any rational function. Let's look at a function g of x. And maybe we'll take a look at x minus two over x squared minus nine. Okay, now we might wanna factor the denominator here so we can see what allows the denominator to be zero. Now, in this case, notice the degree of the denominator is larger than that of the numerator. In that case, you will always have a horizontal asymptote and it will always be the x-axis. Or in other words, just the line y equals zero. So the x-axis is acting as the horizontal asymptote, or in other words, the end behavior of the graph. What values allow the denominator to be zero? Well, in this case, three and a negative three. So we have two vertical asymptotes. We have one at x equals three, and we have one at x equals a negative three. Okay, so now we have our vertical asymptotes and our horizontal asymptotes. The y-intercept, we put zero in for x. Well, if I put zero in for x, I'm just left with a negative two over a negative nine, or a positive two ninths. Okay, so we'll have to estimate that a little bit on our graph. It's about right here, let's say. And our x-intercept, we put zero in for y. Again, this is y, and the only way a fraction can equal zero is if the numerator is zero. What makes the numerator zero? When x is two. So I know it crosses the x-axis at two. Now, I have to approach these asymptotes, and I have to cross here and here. So we really have no choice how we draw, draw the graph here in the center. It would look something like this. Now, I wanna pause here just to mention a couple things about a horizontal asymptote. I keep mentioning that it really tells us the end behavior. A graph can cross the horizontal asymptote. It will never cross a vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptotes are created by values that are not in the domain. A horizontal asymptote is really only telling us the end behavior of the graph. Okay, so someplace not at the ends, it can cross the horizontal asymptote. Now, <clears throat> over here, the graph is either below the x-axis or above the x-axis. It's easy to determine, for example, if I pick a value larger than three, like when x would be four, notice the numerator would be positive, the denominator would be positive, or in other words, the function therefore is positive, and if the function or y is positive, it's above the x-axis. <clears throat> Over here, if I pick a value like a negative four to the left of this asymptote, the numerator would be negative, the denominator would be positive, which means the function is negative and therefore below the x-axis. And there's the graph of that rational function. Okay, so again, all of this information is relatively easy to find just by looking at our function. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at something a little bit different. Let's say we have something like x squared minus 3x minus 4. And we'll say that this is over... Um, x minus 2. Now, in this case, the degree of the numerator is larger than that of the denominator. And when we have a situation like that, we will never have a horizontal asymptote. All of this other information, though, is found the same. Okay? So we're not going to get a horizontal asymptote because the degree of the numerator 
is larger than that of the denominator. <clears throat> My vertical asymptote happens at the values that are not in our domain. <clears throat> Just factoring the numerator there. Now, so therefore, in this case, we have a vertical asymptote at 2. We don't have a horizontal asymptote. Y-intercept, I put 0 in for x. If I put 0 in for x, I'm just left with a negative 4 over negative 2 or 2. So it's crossing the y-axis at 2. The x-intercept, I put 0 in for y. This is y. The only way a fraction can equal 0 is if the numerator is 0. What makes the numerator 0? Well, 4 and a negative 1. So we have two of these. <clears throat> so it's crossing the, uh, the x-axis at a negative 1 and also at 4. Now, we don't have a horizontal asymptote, but there is always some kind of end behavior asymptote. In this case, it's just not a horizontal line. How do we find that? Well, we need to use long division. So depending on our polynomials, you could actually do long division of polynomials like this. You might need to review that. Or in this case, we could also use synthetic division. Here are the coefficients of this polynomial. I'll take this constant here and change the sign. I bring the one straight down, we multiply here, write it in the next column, add, we multiply here, and add. So if we would have gone through this long division, our answer would have been x minus 1, and a negative 6 is our remainder. <clears throat> so remember that our end behavior asymptote is really what is happening as x is approaching, let's say, infinity. That would be the right side. When x becomes very large, notice this fraction approaches 0. So we're really only interested in this. Or in other words, our end behavior asymptote is just the line y equals x minus 1. <clears throat> Again, we find that by long division. So notice this has a y-intercept of a negative 1 and a slope of 1. So in other words, here's the asymptote that the graph is approaching out at the ends. And now if I approach these asymptotes and I cross the x and y axis at my locations that I found, this graph looks like this. And that's why it looks like that when we look at it on our calculator. Okay, so notice all of this was the same. It's just that if the degree of the numerator is more than the denominator, we have to use long division or synthetic division to find. In this case, this is sometimes referred to as a slant asymptote or an end behavior asymptote. Now, there's one other example that we need to look at here. <clears throat> Let's say I have something like x minus 2 over x squared um, plus x minus 6. Say I have a function like this. Notice here, if I factor that denominator, we have a common factor, the numerator and denominator. So something kind of odd happens here a little bit. Notice this function is approximately equal to, if I would cancel the common factors, I would just get 1 over x plus 3. And I say approximately equal to because they would not be the same function, because they have a different domain. Okay, so 
we need to keep in mind what the original domain was, but we actually are kind of just graphing this function. Now, notice the degree of the denominator is larger than the numerator, so we always have a horizontal asymptote and it's always the x-axis. Vertical asymptotes. Well, we said that with one exception, and this is it. We always get a vertical asymptote at any value that makes the denominator zero. So we would think that we would have a vertical asymptote at a negative three, which we do. And we would also think that we have a vertical asymptote at two. However, because of these common factors, we don't get a vertical asymptote there. Now, that point is still not in the domain, so the graph won't exist there. We just don't have a vertical asymptote. <clears throat> the y-intercept, we put 0 and for x. If I put 0 and for x, I'm just left with a negative 2 over negative 6, or a positive 1 third. So it's crossing the y-axis about right here. The x-intercept, I would put 0 and for y, and remember this is y. The only way a fraction can equal 0 is if the numerator is 0. 2 makes the numerator 0, however, we have to remember 2 is not in the domain. x could never equal 2. And therefore, we will not get an x-intercept. So this graph, we can tell just by looking at it, it will never cross the x-axis. Now, if we look at this one, <clears throat> over here, the graph ends up looking like this. It's below the x-axis, because if I pick any value of x less than a negative 3, my numerator would be negative, my denominator would be positive, therefore the function is negative and below the x-axis. Over here, I have to approach the asymptotes and cross right here. And this is the graph that you would see on your calculator, however it's not quite correct yet. We're looking at the graph of this. Our original function, the correct function, did not have two in the domain, and therefore we would just show that that point is missing there by putting a little open circle there. So notice everything was the same except because of the common factors, we just didn't get a vertical asymptote at two, but we still have to show that that point is missing. So hopefully this video helped in the review. Remember that if the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, you will always have a horizontal asymptote and you just simply take the leading term divided by the leading term to find its location. If the degree of the denominator is larger than the numerator, you always have a horizontal asymptote, and it's always the x-axis. If the degree of the numerator is larger than the denominator, you will never have a horizontal asymptote. You have some other kind of asymptote that you have to find through division. And then all of this other information is always found exactly the same way. <clears throat> so hopefully uh, you can practice these techniques a little bit and get much better at doing a rough sketch. And in, in particular, when you look at a graph like this on your calculator, you should easily be able to tell whether you're looking at the correct graph. Maybe you type something in incorrectly or something. Because we should already know basically kind of what they look like just by looking at the function. So I will see you next time.